our service is found in your service bulletin and uh, we'll follow the service through. We also welcome, we especially welcome all those who join us by live stream this morning. For those who are with us and for those who are joining by live stream, please know that nursery is back and also children's chapel is available as well. For children's chapel, parents will leave children in children's chapel and pick them up after the service. We have suspended the procession of the children here in children's chapel as part of our COVID, um, COVID safety measures. Once again, welcome.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the fourth chapter of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and one soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands and, or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the feet of the apostles, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our appointed psalm for this Sunday is Psalm 133. We will read together in unison. Oh, how, how good, good and pleasant, and pleasant it is when, when brethren, brethren live together, together in unity. unity. It is, it is like fine oil from the head that, that runs down upon the beard, and upon, upon the beard of Aaron, and, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. A reading from the first and second chapters of 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him 
there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but... If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Christ. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I begin where we ended last Sunday on Easter Sunday. After the women at the empty tomb had come and briefly told Peter and the others all that they had seen and heard. Afterward, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. In today's gospel reading, we see Jesus, or hear of Jesus appearing to the disciples who were gathered out of fear, fear of the leaders of the Jews who had arrested and tried our Lord. Jesus appeared to them, said, peace be with you. They didn't recognize him. And he said, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so I send you. You see my hands and my side. Jesus, the one who showed us the way to reconciliation and right relationship with God through his sacrifice on the cross, appears to his disciples and says, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so I send you. If you forgive give the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And thus we become not only witnesses to the resurrection and eternal life, that sacred and imperishable message of eternal salvation, we also become men ministers of reconciliation in the world. I have to admit that my favorite line on this, the second Sunday of Easter, is the first verse of Psalm 133. It is near and dear to my heart because that verse is indeed the motto of the University of the South where I attended college. It is an aspirational statement. Just as the witness of the disciples in Acts today when they came together as a community, sold all that they possessed and gave it to the apostles and all who needed anything were taken care of. What a wonderful witness to the power of the resurrection in that early community. And through that commitment to Christ and the gospel and that commitment to one another, that message was shared throughout the known world in a few short decades. I do not plan to argue that we should try to replicate what happened then, but rather say, what a wonderful witness to the power and strength of that early community. And in Psalm 133, Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. Brothers and sisters, we say now, as women were admitted to Swanee around 1970. And who is my brother and sister as that circle expands in our knowledge through the years? For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life, forevermore. Yes, I know it says on Mount Hermon in Zion, but also I would say 
when we live into that reality of being the community of Christ, finding unity in Christ, that is the embodiment of life evermore on this earth. The University of the South, also known as Swanee, is wrestling with the reality that it is the University of the Old South, or has been. It has long owned the reality that it is no longer that. For a time, it was the University of the South in the 20th century and now in the 21st century. But what does it mean to live as a community where it is good and pleasant, where all who gather there live together in unity? What does that mean for a Christian congregation that is called to be witness to the world, following those words from Galatians, in Christ there is no Jew nor Greek, no slave nor free, no male nor female, but one fellowship in Christ. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. What a witness to a world that is all too fractured. And then that beautiful reading from John, 1 John, that is, the epistle. Speaking of walking as children of the light. Speaking of the fact that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we live as the forgiven children of God, restored, reconciled to God and one another, then we, not as individuals, though we are called to go out and serve Christ and proclaim the good news, but we, as community, spread that good news through word and action as a beacon of light and hope to a world seeking and searching and hurting. At the eight o'clock service, we celebrated being back together in community. And I spoke of the fact that we have had to find pockets of community and support as we stayed apart from one another for a time. I gave thanks and give thanks for signs like this right here, the second mass that I really didn't need today, but I brought. It says Virginia Theological Seminary. It reminds me as I know, but it reminds me that I am part of that community where I was formed as a priest. During this past year, we have remembered, or I have remembered many communities that have been of support. I have stayed in contact from afar with many people. But since I was here last Sunday, I traveled to Alabama, my sister has, is fully vaccinated. I am as well, and my mother is as well. And for the first time in a year, we were able to gather to do some of the things that mom needed and had to defer during the pandemic, but also to renew those, that strength and those bonds that have been there for a long time and continue to support us. There's still work to do. I wish I could have stayed a month. There would have been plenty to do. Just as, as we start up as a Christian community here, everything is not gonna return overnight. But we have nursery and children's chapel, and we are worshiping 
when we meet next as vestry, we will look at when and how to bring communion back. We know for a time we will not be able to have the wine, but soon I believe we will be able to share the bread. And now those layers of activity and ministry that we have been connected in in the past, that we have remembered and continued as we could for this year. We are renewed and building anew. What are our hopes based in that call to spread the gospel? based in that call to live together in unity as nothing less than the body of Christ bearing witness to the message, the sacred and imperishable message of eternal salvation. Amen. Standing, let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, and begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Kneeling as you are able, let us pray. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For Joseph, our president, Roy, our governor, Mitch, our mayor, and for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim their rights, and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, Robert, our priest, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them with your grace Strengthen them in their trials, give them courage to face the perils which beset them, and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. 
Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, including those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. It is wonderful to be back together again in worship at St. John's. We began the in-person in, in worship again on Palm Sunday and on Easter. We now have resumed the 8 o'clock service as well as the 1030 service. But we continue live stream at this service. As we navigate our safe return back to worship. We will continue to pray for members of the congregation at the eight o'clock service. And the names of those that we pray for are in the Tuesday headlines. Yet for privacy, we have yet to figure out exactly how we will pray at this service. But for this time, you will notice that the prayers for individuals are included for our private prayers in the announcement bulletin. We'll also um, notice for those who have been to the parish beach weekend before that we will have the beach weekend in a little different way this year. It continues to be one of the best ways to get to know other members of the congregation as we take time apart from our busy lives and enjoy some time at the beach in June. So please consider the beach weekend. Also, thanks to those who are helping with Children's Chapel and with youth and acolytes and all the ministry of the church. We will not be returning to breakfast for some time but we are looking at ways that we can have fellowship and food. And Lizzie, you want to say just a bit about next week? Um, and come on up to the microphone so all can hear us. So. Good morning. Um, next Sunday, all, all parishioners are invited, but families in particular are invited to stay and have lunch. You'll see a um, order form in your pews um, for the little taco truck. Um, if you have children of any ages at the church, we invite you to stay and have your taco lunch here so that we can talk about future ministries and fellowship involving children and youth. If you do not have children at home anymore, we invite you to order your lunch to go um, from the Little Taco Truck. It will be here um, next week. Um, I can take your order forms this week if you want to go ahead and fill those out. Um, or next week, I will be there um, before church and after to take your order forms and get them as quickly as we can to the food truck. And we hope that you will consider getting your lunch and or staying and joining us. Thank you. Are there other, are there other announcements? 
Once again, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed art thou, O Lord God, King of, King of the universe. Through your gracious goodness, we have this bread and wine which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, join in our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice 
for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and, ser and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in the remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray in the words of a prayer for communion with Christ. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.